And now that we've got those in there, we'll take the jug back up top. All right. Then we're going to start our flow again. And you might want to make sure you get the flow going pretty good. Just to try to flush out any air bubbles. It, it doesn't hurt to just kind of tap on the tubing a little bit. Tap on the flow meter just to dislodge any air bubbles. And then we're going to slow the flow back down to that 75 milliliter per minute rate, which on this unit was right around 80 in the middle of the ball. Then we're going to let this count for a few cycles. Now we added 2,000 counts per milliliter of two micron particles. We calibrate what's called an edge bin because we're calibrating we're looking at two to five micron. The actual particles that we're looking at are particles that are greater than two micron in size. It's assumed that the two micron spheres that we added, that if we, if we look at the distribution, 50% of them are just under two micron and 50% are just above two micron. So what we're actually looking for on this number here is a thousand counts because a, a half of the two micron particles are going to fall in that two to five micron or the greater than two micron bin. So what we want to see is approximately half of, of the 2,000 counts that we added. So we, what we ideally would see here is 1,000 counts per milliliter. And what we, what we have, of course, right now is 700 counts. And we knew our background counts were around 50. So we really have about 640, 650 counts per milliliter that are showing up right now. OK, so we're, we're a little bit low on our, con, on our count accuracy. So what we're going to do is go in and now and actually perform the calibration. This is where things get a lot easier. We're going to go to the menu. We're going to go to service setup. We're going to go to where it says auto calibration. Auto adjust threshold. And then we're going to tell it we want to calibrate 2 micron. Hit enter. Now we want to make sure that our flow is properly set. The flow being at 75 milliliters per minute is very important when you're doing this calibration. So we'll get it set right where we want it at. And then we're going to hit enter to continue. It'll take just about 15 seconds or so for it to perform the calibration. And it's going to show us what our old threshold value was, which was 122. Our new threshold value is 113. And it also tells us what the, what the neighboring thresholds were. So one micron threshold, which we're not looking at one micron particles, but there is a threshold there for it. It's 52 and three micron is 252. What we want to make sure is that the two micron threshold never overlaps the neighboring threshold settings. If it did, then something was, you know, something is wrong with the calibration or the sensor. So now we're going to press enter, we're going to actually enter one to save. That's going to save our configuration, and then we'll keep making sure that our flow is at 75 mils per minute. And when this comes out of the save mode, it's going to go into a sampling mode, and it'll just be about 10 seconds, and we'll see what the results are. Okay, so now you can see we have exactly 999 counts. Now that does include our background counts, uh, so that would actually be about 950. We have no, really no way of telling the unit what the background counts are, so that's why it's important that your background counts are low, less than 50, uh, ideally. So what we actually have here as far as the calibration is concerned is, is, is now a very accurate reading for the two micron particles. Now that we completed the two micron calibration, the only thing we want to make sure we do is mark our jug so that we know what's in it. Because we have a lot of solution left, obviously, and we can reuse this solution to calibrate other particle counters. So we'll take this down now. And we're going to disconnect the tubing from the bottom of the sensor. This tubing is going to stay with this jug. What we don't want to do is cross-contaminate samples by using the same tubing in multiple jugs. So it's important we keep this tubing with that jug. If you want, you can actually poke a little hole in this and feed your tubing through or just kind of put the top back onto the jug. Okay, now we're ready to do our 5 micron calibration. And just like with the 2 micron calibration, of course, we're going to check the blank water counts first. 
And then once we do that, we're going to prepare a new set of tubing just for this jug and then plumb it all back up. And we'll pick up when we get that all hooked up again. Okay, so we went through the same process of preparing our 5 micron solution. We had our background counts were very similar to what we had with when we made a 2 micron solution. Um, and we're going to now start the flow and see what we get. We made a, we made a solution of 1,000 counts per milliliter of 5 micron particles. So as with the 2 micron, what, what we're expecting to see is half of those, 50% of those, be above 5 micron and the other half be below 5 micron. So 500 counts in the 2 to 5 and 500 counts in the 5 to 10. Now we're going to adjust our flow for 75 mils per minute. Okay, so we're seeing the total counts that we expected to see, and that includes that 50 background counts. So we're very accurate on terms of count accuracy. Uh, where we need to make an adjustment is in our sizing accuracy, because right now approximately, let's just say 70% of the particles are appearing in the 2 to 5 micron channel, and 30% are, are appearing in the 5 to 10. What we'd like to have is the perfect 50-50 split, but we need to have at least a 60-40 split or better. So now we're going to go into the menu to calibrate the 5 micron spheres. So we're going to hit menu. And we're going to scroll down to service setup and enter. Auto calibration, hit enter. Auto adjust thresholds, hit enter. And now we're going to tell it, using the up arrow, change that to 5. So we're telling the analyzer we're calibrating 5 micron. Hit enter. Make sure your flow rate is set for 75 milliliters per minute and then hit enter to continue. Once again, it'll take about 10 to 15 seconds. And it's going to show us our old threshold value of 513, our new threshold value of 469, and our neighboring thresholds. So to accept that, we change it to 1 and hit enter to save. So now we can see we have a perfect split of 526 and 526, so an even 50-50 split. Of course, that won't stay the same. As it will update, we'll see that the values will change slightly. But we have what appears to be a very good calibration on the 5 microns. If you wanted to make small adjustments to the actual calibration, that can be done. For, for all intents and purposes, this is well within accuracy requirements in terms of the kind of split that we're looking to get. But if you wanted to try to adjust for the background counts and make your 2 to 5 micron counts a little bit higher to account for those 50 micron background counts, you can do that by going into Menu and then scroll down to Service Setup, back into, in this case, Manual Calibration, and then we're going to do Manual Adjust Thresholds. We're going to tell it we want to manually adjust 5 micron. Okay. And so now, we, if we want to, we can manually do some soft adjustments to the calibration threshold. If we raise this threshold up, for example, I'm going to take it from 469 to, say, 479. I'm going to hit Enter. Okay, and we're just going to do that, that one size. And so we'll hit Menu to back out. Menu again. Menu again. And then do an Exit and Save. So what we have done now is we've done a manual adjustment to that calibration threshold. It wasn't necessary to do it, but just to demonstrate the fact that that can be done. And what we should see now is that our counts in the 2 to 5 are a little bit higher than they were before compared to the counts in the 5 to 10. We make sure our flow rate is right at the 75 per milliliter mark. Okay, so now you can see we have 561 counts in the 2 to 5 and 470 counts in the 5 to 10. Once again, that wasn't really necessary to do that, but if you, if you want to be very precise and account for those background counts, you can make those adjustments. Now that we've completed the 5 micron calibration, it should be pretty clear about how this would, would work with larger size spheres. You can obviously do calibration spheres on up to the, the top end of the instrument, which is around 100 micron. 
Uh, when you're calibrating particles, say, in the 2 to 20 or 30 micron size range, the spheres will stay in suspension fairly well. But the larger the particle you use, the more important it would be to possibly have a, 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 a stir, a stir plate with a stir bar to keep that solution moving around and keep the spheres in suspension. This is especially important once you start using spheres above 20 micron. But besides that, the, everything works pretty much the same, whether you're calibrating 2s, 5s, 10s, or 15s. If you're looking at filter effluent, if your particle counter is being used to look at clean water, filter effluent, it's generally not important to calibrate particles greater than 15 micron. Uh, most of the particles, 90% of them, will be in those lower size channels, say 2 to 3 or 2 to 5 micron, and there'll be very few counts larger than that. But if your particle counter is being used for other applications, such as condensate monitoring in a power plant, then in that case, it's going to be more important to calibrate the larger particles, especially when you're using the volumetric part per billion uh, readout. Uh, the calibrations on like the larger particles becomes very important to getting accurate PPB determinations. Okay. Well, that concludes our, our video for how to calibrate the particle counters. Thank you.